I didn't know if he was contacting. Okay, thank you. Okay, Carla, if you would uh, take roll, please. John Aaron. Here. Mark Arnold. Here. Whitney Hall. Here. Cody Haney. Here. Marvin Kusick. Here. Eddie Mack. Here. Cole Ream. Here. John Roberts. Here. Everybody's president accounted for. We have a full quorum. I hereby call this meeting to order. <coughs> and the first item on the agenda is to uh, consider the approval of the minutes of the last Metropolitan Area Planning Commission of the 21st of November. Has everybody had a chance to look at those? If so, I'll consider a motion. I'll move the motion to approve the minutes. I have a motion. I have a, I'll second it. And a second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed? And the motion to approve the minutes carries. And we'll drop all the way down to uh, 8.1 lot splits. The first one is to consider a lot split for the north 70 feet of lots 13 through 16, block 51, Webster Park, and the south 70 feet of lots 13 through 16, block 51, Webster Park, located at the northeast corner of 27th Street and Maple Avenue. Chris? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This lot should be fairly familiar to the commission because you approved it a couple of months ago. Uh, Chisholm Creek Development purchased this property at 27th and Maple. They subdivided it, making each lot equal. But uh, when we looked at the required setbacks along Maple, uh, it required him to adjust that property line north four feet so he could have the same home on the north as is on the south. And that's the reason it's back for you this evening. It's recommended for approval. Any questions? I have a motion to approve. I'll second. And a second. All those in favor of approving that, uh, say aye. 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 Those opposed? And that motion carries. <clears throat> and the next item is 8.2 to consider a lot split for lot 21, lot 22, lot 23, lot 24, block 2 Chestnut Industrial Center located at 801, 805, and 813 Commercial Circle. Chris. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if you're familiar with this, this is on Chestnut Commercial Circle. It is zoned industrial. There are four lots involved. Uh, there have been three buildings built on the four lots by one individual. They're coming back for, to you this evening to subdivide the four lots into three so they can sell each building with its own property separately. This is the survey that shows you the proposed lot lines in relationship to the buildings. We have access to commercial circle for all three lots. We have, say, have access to water and sewer. It's recommended for approval. Any questions for Chris on that one? Motions? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. A second. And I have a second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed? And that motion carries unanimously. We'll drop down to 11.1 .1 for sidewalk variances. Consider a sidewalk variance for Jeff Eaton on lot one, Babe's Edition, located at 1328 North Van Buren. Chris? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll introduce the uh, variance request, and then Jeff is here to further state the reasons for requiring the variance. This is the property outlined <coughs> in yellow. It's at the corner of Poplar and Van Buren. Um, I've now turned my slide to get that to fit, so I apologize there. We have Van Buren at the bottom of the slide and Poplar's on the right-hand side. Uh, in the corner, you see his development is where he's going to build his new office building. This is a photograph of the corner, and then this is a photograph of the Polk. So we'll go back to his proposal uh, in his, and I'll point, use the, the pointer to help you here. This is uh, Van Buren Access. This is Oxford. Poplar. Poplar, pardon me. Here's the new office building. So you can see he's occupying a very small percentage of his entire property. He is going to build sidewalk all the way along Van Buren and Poplar. He's asking for relief along Polk. Are there any questions of staff? And if there is not, then Jeff, anything you'd like to add? 
put something up with a big piece of land and uh, please come here because oh, sure. we have people watching you're on TV right. Fantastic. thank you sir um, no that's I mean he, he out <coughs> um, it's a big piece of property four acres and um, that's a lot of sidewalk and so we're asking for relief on the on the Polk side um, I took a couple of pictures this morning just um, one's uh, both ways on Polk it's very industrial I don't see any uh, other sidewalks ever adjoining that back piece. Um, if in the future there is development in the back um, and something were to go in in the back part, obviously, nut, I mean, it would come before you all. Yeah. I could see a sidewalk then on Polk. For now, I don't know what's going to happen to the back portion, so we're just asking for a little relief on Polk. There's actually two industrial buildings, uh, shop buildings, the back side of Cummins, the back side of um, northern equipment and the mini storage. So I make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the variance. All those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries unanimously. Excuse me. Who seconded the motion? Thank you, Don. <clears throat> okay, 11.2 is to consider a sidewalk variance for Jim B. Song. Located at 613 South Johnson, described as lots two and three, West Garriott Business Park Edition. Chris. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Here in the yellow is represents the site. This is an existing convenience store located on South Johnson. Uh, I trade with this, so I personally have experience here. He simply wanted to put a canopy over the fueling um, pumps. And when we do that, that requires a building permit. And according to the sidewalk ordinance, new development is defined when you get a building permit. And uh, it would, the ordinance would require a sidewalk along Johnson. Um, this is the engineering that Scott's right behind me is gonna talk to you about in a little bit, the, the grade change and why it's difficult. And it's more than just a sidewalk. There's a picture and you can kind of see it's a little bit hard to actually get the feel of the grade, but in order to meet the ADA cross slope requirements of 1 in 48, which is almost flat, but yet enough to let stormwater drain off of, would require the recontouring of most of this property, and which is why it's excessive in cost. Um, the, the, I'm sorry, I needed to stop right there. With that, I'll let uh, Scott add anything he'd like to as the engineer of this project. Scott Holson, uh, Bergerman Holson Engineering. I'm going to represent Mr. Song tonight. The canopy that he wants to build will be in this area, which is paved, will be paved. The sidewalk <coughs> currently is 3 to 7 percent cross slope. In order to bring that into compliance, we basically have to tear out most of the parts of his building flatten it, cut it out, bring it back up, and make it a reasonable area. That was estimated about $50,000 in order to bring the, uh, to do the canopy, that's an additional $50,000 for Questions? How much is it just to be the canopy without the sidewalk? Say there's a flaw in the system and we're looking at a gas island canopy the same way we look at a development like stone bridge or something so motion to approve i have a motion to approve second and i have a second uh, i have motion and a second to approve the variance on item 11.2 all those in favor aye. Aye. aye aye those opposed and that motion is unanimous <coughs> All right, the next one is 11.3. To consider a sidewalk variance for Arlen Potter, located at 1306 North Grand. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll introduce this one again, and Scott is here as the engineer for this customer as well. Uh, looking at the slide, if uh, you see where I have the address, 1306, this is an existing building right here. Here is the new building that Arlen Potter developed, and he made the necessary 
sidewalk corrections to the existing sidewalk on Birch. He's here to ask relief for the sidewalk requirements on Grand where there is no development occurring, but the sidewalk ordinance does not consider that. It says if you are developing, which is what he did, then any streets that abut that property is required to have a sidewalk. And uh, we have the same contour elevation issues that we had on the last uh, request, and I have a slide of that for you. And Scott, would you finish, please? This is the, the same scenario. Um, he did go ahead and construct the... Did we turn that on? No, he did. Oh. Just, there, there you go. There you go. He did construct the sidewalk in Longbridge. Quite a lot Same condition. With the sidewalk ordinance, so he's asking for relief on Grand Street. Questions? Oh. Yeah, motion to approve. Thank you. I have a motion to approve. I'll second that. And a second. We have a motion and a second to approve the variance on 11.3. All those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed? And that is unanimous. We have no more items on the agenda. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I have a motion. Second. Second. Okay. Motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? We're adjourned. Good show. Yeah, 11 minutes.